Hello, I'm Crafty Patty, and thank you for tuning in. If you were watching one of my past sewing videos, we showed you how to make this Japanese knot bag. And I will leave a link to this video if you haven't seen it so you know where to find it, and I'll leave that in the description box for you. But I did promise in that video that I would show you how to make another bag. So today, we are going to be making the Japanese rice bag. Reversible if wanted. Make them for kids, Christmas, lunch, storage baskets. And I'm also going to show you at the end of the video how to make one that's narrow and tall for certain Christmas items. And I'm also going to show you how to use up an old pair of jeans. So keep watching and let's get started on how to make the Japanese rice bag. And you might be wondering, why do they call it a Japanese rice bag? Well, in the old days, they used to actually put the rice in these bags and then they would carry it to the emperor for an offering. Now, of course, in the old days, they didn't have fabric choices like this. So they would use scraps of fabric. They would do kind of crazy quilts. Kind of idea if you're quilting you know what I mean by that and indigo dyes and that's what they used to use just whatever scraps of fabric they had around to carry the rice in so we've just modernized it a little bit more to make them a little bit more fun if you're going to be doing a lot of quilting or even just projects like this it really is helpful if you've got a cutting board your Omni Grid Ruler and your Rotary Cutter. It makes things so much faster and so much easier and you get nice, sharp, clean cut lines. Of course, you want to have your ironing board and iron. A spray bottle is gonna help with some interfacing that we're gonna be using and I'll explain that in a bit. And a really handy tool for turning your pieces of fabric to the right side is a little tool called Turn It All. And this is really handy, and I'm going to show you how we use this further on in the video. And this is optional. This is by Unique 2-in-1 Marking Pen. And this will assist if you want to make little dots so you've got a point where you can see where you're starting your sewing. And that will become more clear when we get to the sewing part. Fabrics, I generally always use 100% quilting cotton fabrics or just cotton fabric. And a fun way to do this is, as you've seen, you've got a really nice complementary fabric on the inside and a darning wool fabric on the outside. And the easiest way to get complementary fabrics like that is go and buy fat quarters. These particular ones have got the little orange fox and the fox here, so they complement really well together. I found these at Walmart but you can find fat quarters anywhere in your fabric stores. How big is a fat quarter? You want to make sure that you pre-wash all your fabric. And now this fat quarter here, this will fit a little bag like these, probably anywhere from a three inch to, if you're lucky, depending if they've been generous on the cut for the fat quarter, you might get a five inch. If you want to make a bigger bag than the five, then I would suggest you buy a half a meter of fabric. That is almost like two fat quarters. And that will allow you to have enough fabric to make a larger bag if you want to be even larger, then buy yourself a meter or a yard and uh, that will allow you to make a bigger bag and maybe even a smaller one as well. But remember when you're buying your fabric, you need to buy two pieces. You're buying fabric for your outer and you're buying a fabric 
for the lining. So you need two pieces. Now let's talk about interfacing. This bag that I've made more of like a lunch bag, no interfacing and it's floppy. Now if you like the floppy look, then you don't need to add the interfacing. Let's say you want one to use as a storage bin to put on some shelves like this one. This one is nice and stiff and I added the interfacing on the outer fabric and on the inner fabric to make it really stiff. You'll probably find your interfacing by the yardage or meter and it comes in all different weights. There's some that is fusible and there's some that is just for sewing in. You want to get the fusible. The stiffer fusible interfacing that I'm using today is from Pelon and this one here is 809 a decor bond and that is quite a heavy interfacing. Here's a heavy one and this is a lightweight. I think you can see the difference there. If you want your sides to stay up and not be really rigid, then what I did with this one, I only applied the fusible interfacing to the outer fabric and I didn't apply any to the inside fabric. That interfacing is, again, from Pelon, and this one is fusible featherweight. And of course you'll need your sewing machine, some sewing pins, and some sewing scissors. When working on projects where you've got an outer fabric and an inside fabric, and you want those to be exactly the same size, then a good trick is to lay both pieces of fabric together as close as you can to match up your sides. And then you will have exactly the same amount for inside and outside, and it'll be much easier for sewing, believe me. So the first thing I want to do is, you might not see it from that far away, but I've got some salvage here. So I want to take those salvage edges off. So I'm just going to, by using my OmniGrid ruler and my cutting board, I can match up my lines here to down here. And I'm just going to trim that off. And the same on all other sides. I'm just going to go around with my OmniGrid ruler and we're going to cut off that nice clean lines to work with. So I've worked it out by counting up and counting across this way that I will be able to get my rice bag at four and a half inches, which would be 11.43 centimeters. So the first thing, it's easier to just cut off your strips first. So what we need to do is cut our drawstring strips first. And we don't have a long piece of fabric. So we're gonna to have to join two of these together to make a nice long drawstring. And we have to make two drawstrings. So that means we have to cut this at one and a half. We're gonna make them one and a half inches wide, which is 3.81 centimeters. And we need to cut four of these, okay? If you're not sure how long to make your drawstrings, then you can just do an estimate. You can kind of just do a little loop around here. And let's say that I've got about uh, four squares by four squares here. I'm making, well, say four inches by four inches, which is about 10.16 centimeters. And then you want some, a little bit of uh, tail so you can tie it. So let's say that would be approximately, say perfectly 30 inches, or that would be about 76 centimeters. So you can do that and then you know how long to cut your drawstrings. Now don't freak out the way I'm cutting this because I'm trying to be in camera for you. Don't worry, I've never cut myself. 
and I've and as you remember, I've got my top and my bottom here. So there's one each for each drawstring there. So this is where you can see the the ruler and the rotary cutter really works well. There's two. And the way I like to make my tabs is I cut my lining fabric larger than the outside fabric and then it gives a nice little border to each side. So we're going to be cutting our lining at two inches and our outer fabric at one and a half inches. Now just to make that easier, because I've got my lining underneath, I'm just going to cut them both at two inches. I'm going to waste half an inch. I'm not too worried about that. So here's our cut at two inches. This is my outside fabric. And this is my inner fabric. My inner fabric is the one that's going to be wrapping around. So I need to cut this one smaller. So we're going to bring this back in here and I'm just going to take a half an inch off of that. Now I'm only going to be making four tabs so we'll have enough here to make four tabs. So there's our tab for our tabs, this is for our drawstrings, and now we've got this left over to cut out. We need five squares. So this is where I was counting up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. You see, I don't have enough to make a five inch bag. So I've got to make this four and a half. So there's one, two, three, four and a half. And there's my one, two, three, four. So I've got just enough for four and a half. So I'll line it up, make sure I'm cutting it four and a half. And we will have a few squares left over, but that's okay. Here's my four and a half. Here's my half. One, two, three, four. And I'm only taking just a smidgen off the top here. And I will have some squares left over, but this is just the easiest way to show you how to cut all your pieces. Okay, so we've gone that way. Now let's come around this way. And we're coming and making our square. So now we have to go four and a half this way. And I'm lining up my half mark from my OmniGrid ruler. Half down here. One, two, three, four, and one half. And let's cut through those squares. Let's do that again. Here's those ones. Again, here's our half. We need four more. That's four squares. We still need a fifth square. So we'll have some fabric left over. And this is just what we've got left over of fabric. So that's pretty good. We haven't really wasted hardly anything at all. We can always use this for another project because I always find something to do. Okay, so we only need five squares. So we can take those ones away. And then we've got these to make our outer and our lining. We now have all our pieces cut. Now it's time to decide whether you want a really heavy duty straight side or you want it just a soft edge like this one. I'm choosing the featherweight fusible interfacing. And again, I'm going to just square up this bottom line here so it's nice and straight. 
So because we've cut these at four and a half or 11.43 centimeters, we want to cut your fusible interfacing just shy of that. So what I'm doing with my background grid on my cutting mat in my Omni grid ruler, I'm lining it up to my four and a half, but I'm just pushing it back so I can see my line is just past my four and a half mark. So it's just slightly shy of my four and a half. And we'll cut that. So and again, coming the same way this way, here's my edge and I'm going to make it just slightly shy of four and a half. So here's my four and a half here. I'm going to bring it this way so I can see my blue line underneath. And then it'll be slightly shy of four and a half. And I'll do the same for the other ones. So you'll see on your fusible interfacing that one side is sort of feels fluffy soft. And on the other side, you'll see there's little tiny dots and that's the fusible portion of the interfacing. So you want to place this side to your wrong side of your fabric. So here's one of my squares, right side, wrong side is facing up, and you want the fusible side of your fusible interfacing right side so it will attach to the fabric. And then because we've cut the slightly um, short, then it's not going to stick to your ironing board. It might be nice if you've got like a, a squirt bottle and it, if you have just a little tiny bit of water on here, it just tends to help it along. Place a piece of scrap fabric over top. Take your iron, give it some steam. And then press down for about 15 seconds. Move it to the next spot and again press down for 15 seconds. And move it again 15 seconds. And there we have, oh and you can see my just caught slightly on the back side. I didn't cut that one quite short enough. That's okay. That's what we're trying to prevent. So there you go. And do that to the rest of them. And you're probably wondering, like everybody else, what this is. Um, this is a Teflon cover that I've had on my iron for, oh my gosh, probably 30, 40 years. It's been on there a long time. I've been crafting for many, many years since I was very young. And uh, this is just used mainly for really delicate fabrics so you don't burn your fabrics. But I never take it off because it just glides so nice over the fabric. So I just leave it on. Teflon cover. So I mentioned the little accessories here, the unique um, fabric marker, which will wash out, and the sewing and knitting gauge. Now, I've measured this on my sewing machine. My needle is right up on this edge here, and this gauge here is marking the edge of my presser foot. So I always use that when I'm sewing these kind of projects. So my will be my seam allowance on all of my seams. So when you're sewing, sometimes it's difficult to see exactly that because you want this pretty accurate when you're sewing. So you can take your gauge and butt it up against your fabric. And then what you're looking for is this perfect little square here. You can see the edge here and just basically you're coming in and marking it where your square is. And if you can eyeball that, then that's great if you can't then you can certainly move it both ways to get the perfect little marking. Um, if, you're, if you're happy with like just freeing it in, you can 
estimate where that is, great. So you can go around and mark them all, and that's just an option. But you'll see what I mean when I get to the sewing machine when we start sewing these squares together. So remember how we cut four strips of your lining and four strips of your outer fabric for your drawstring. We did that because this one strip isn't long enough for a drawstring. So all we're going to do now is just place right sides together and we're going to sew each one of these together. And again, I'm using the edge of my presser foot to the edge of my fabric and I just find that easier for me. So I'll just do a little back stitch, go to the end, back stitch, and then what I like to do is save a little bit of time, grab your next two, right sides together, pop that into your sewing machine, just sit it right under the presser foot there, let it go along until it grabs, there it goes, it's grabbing, back stitch, and through again, and back stitch. Grab your next one. And then all you have to do is just clip in between each one of those. Saves a bit of thread, saves a bit of time. Now you can just open that up and just with your fingers, you can finger press it. Open those up. Okay, and then you're gonna use your outer fabric and your lining fabric, placing them right sides together. And we're gonna sew all the way down and right sides together and down we go all the way along matching up our presser foot with my material. And when you get to your seams just make sure they're both sitting open nice and flat. And when you get to the end, you're going to stop and pivot and come around to the end here. Just manually come to where it's at the end, pivot, sew across, and that's your needles always down, lifting the presser foot, pivot, and down. And let's sew across the other side. And then just straight down because we've got to turn this and back stitch. And on the end that you've sewed across the bottom, just trim your corners. And you can take a little excess off the end as well. And this is where you get to have fun with your turning tools. So find the end of your fabric here. Choose a tool. And you'll see that there is this set. There's three. So you find the corresponding tool that will fit into the hole of the tool. That's for this one. This, the bigger stick is for this one. And we're going to use the blue one because that's what will fit into this hole. If you're wondering why this looks like it went through the ringer, I did the whole reverse and got it turned to the other side and then I realized my camera wasn't on. So, second time lucky, the camera's on. Take your one tool with the hole in it that will fit into your opening and bring that all the way to your other end. And there we are to the end that we've closed off. Take your corresponding stick, 
put it into the hole, give it some ease here, and then let that go inside of the hole. You can just keep pushing it in. And then once you've got a good amount in there, just come back and then pull down on this end here. Pull down, like so. Pull up, pull down. And there's our stick. We can take our stick and our straw to be off. And then just keep pulling down on this. Until you've got the whole thing reversed to the other side. Voila! And then while you've got your stick in here, just give it a poke. And then take your stick out. And then the last thing to do is you can just use your stick again and we're just going to poke this end of the fabric inside. Make it nice and tidy and then we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we'll just sew across to close that off. And now I'm going to take these to the ironing board and give them a nice pressing. Our next step is to sew the tabs for the bags that we loop our drawstring or ribbon through. Now, I got you to cut one long length because when we sew this all together, you only have to turn your fabric once and then you just go chop, 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 and you've got your four or your eight, depending on how long you've made this. You do have the option, if you don't have enough material to do this one length, is to just cut your strips individually like this and make them one at a time. You don't have to do the borders like I've done, and that's why I've gotten you to cut one at two inches, one at one and a half inches. You can cut them all just at one and a half if you want to, depending on how wide you want your tabs. On the little three, four, and five inch little bags, I choose to just do four tabs, and that uh, cinches up quite cute. And when I get into the larger bags, I think this one warrants to have the eight tabs. And of course, larger, definitely, eight tabs for this one. So let's make the tabs. And placing right sides together, just line up one of your edges. That will be my right side. And we're gonna sew all the way down this one edge. And sew all the way to the end and back stitch. So you've sewed down the left side. Now we're just going to move this fabric so we have our other side matching together. It'll create a little bit of bump in the back. Don't worry about that. And we're just going to sew down this whole edge here. Now to aid in the turning process, we are going to close off this and we're just going to cut that off afterwards. I have left a little bit of extra. I know I've got lots of room to get my four tabs out of this length of fabric. So we'll just go down and do a pivot and we're going to just sew it right across. It will buckle on the other side. Doesn't matter. We're just going to be cutting that off. So I'm just going to push it this way and then I'm just gonna sew right through. We're not gonna be keeping this, so we're, there's no need to trim our corners. So let's just grab our turning tool and we'll turn this to the right side. And again, place your corresponding straw or tube, whatever you wanna call it, and bring it up to the and we're sewing across, get your other stick and give yourself some ease here and poke your end into the hole. And then when you get it started, you can 
bring it the other way around. And we don't care about that end because we're cutting it off so we don't need to poke out our corners. Let's go iron that and then cut them into tabs. Now when I'm ironing this, I'm going to take my thumb and just work it back and forth, making sure that I've got equal amount of border on each side and then I can press it in place. Just work your way along. And that's what the border looks like. I really love it how it just accents it just that much more and then the back side of course is the lining fabric. And now that we've sewed it all in one piece, we can just go ahead and cut at our four inch marks, which would be 10.16 centimeters. And even though it's a small width to cut, I'm still gonna use my rotary cutter because if you've got nice straight sides, when you go to put that in to your middle of your fabrics to sew, this will keep your tabs straight. So accuracy up here is still important. So cut up your four tabs if you're doing four, keeping them straight. And now our next step is we're going to be sewing our lining of the bag and the outer bag. And then we'll be inserting our tabs and then we'll be almost done. Here's the placement of how you're going to lay out your five squares so we can form our box. Now, if you've got a pattern in your fabric like I do, you want to watch how you want to sew it together. So if you were to place, say this one, with the butterflies facing this way, that's how it's going to look on your bag. But if you want the butterflies to be right side up, well, there's some upside and down, but going this way, that will be better. So make sure that you place them all the right way. So I'm gonna change mine and make sure that they're all going in a good direction. Okay, so the first two we're gonna to sew together are these two. So we're gonna bring right sides together and we're gonna be matching up these edges. And remember how we talked about those dots as an option? Well, this is a reminder that when you're sewing on the machine, you're going to start at your dot. You're not gonna go all the way to the edge. You're gonna only go up as far as the dot. You're gonna slow down and you're gonna stop at your dot. And you're gonna do that on all four sides. And when you're matching up your edge of fabric, ignore your interfacing. Just make sure that the fabric pieces are exactly together. Okay, in it goes. And now that I've got my dot there, I can just look down and put my needle right into that dot. And now we're going to just stitch up twice and you can do it by hand if you need to. And then back stitch only two. The reason, we do, the, the reason we're doing that is because you don't wanna sew past those dots. If you sew into this area here, it's gonna create puckers on the edge in the corners of your basket. You don't want that. So let's sew down to the other dot. When you get close, you can just use your hand to make sure you hit right into the dot. Again, back stitch, just two, and forward, just two. And take that out. And here's the two we just sewed. And now let's take our top one and bring that right sides together. And now we're gonna sew along this edge. Same as before, find your dot, insert your needle, forward twice, and back. We've now sewn all the middle ones together. Let's take a side, bring that together, right sides together. And then when you're sewing this, you just have to pull your seam open and then you know that you're matching up this edge to the full edge like so, okay? And the same on this side. 
finger press it open and it comes up and make sure that your fabrics are matched up and again sew along dot to dot And now we've got our last side to do. Again, bringing right sides together. And again, finger pressing the seam open, matching up your edges, finger pressing, matching up your edges. And so dot to dot. Now we're gonna be sewing the sides of our box. So let's bring these two sides together like so and you're going to match up your ends here and then same on this end you're just going to pull and squish it all together like so and i want you to start sewing on the bottom of the bag this will prevent it from buckling at your corner here and you can always um, straighten up your edges later on so always start at the bottom of your bag and work toward the top. And I'm finding my little purple dot. In goes the needle. You can backstitch here. And this time we're going to sew all the way to the end, past the dot. So sewing past the dot and backstitch. There's the first corner of your bag. Let's pull up the next corner. So now we're going to sew these two together. So again, let's match up our corner. And then on this side, just squish it all together, matching up your edges and do the same again. Find your dot. And again, all the way to the top, and past the dot. And for the next side, again, let's put these two together now. Folding together, squishing that corner, flushing up your sides, and sew it again. And our last side. And you've now made your outer box. And just leave it like that, inside out. And now you're gonna take your lining fabric and do exactly the same thing. All over again, right sides together, dot to dot. And again, as a reminder, when you're sewing your sides, you're going to start at the bottom and you're going to come all the way to the top. And the same for the other three sides. And on your bottom of your bag, here's your bottom, you're going to clip all your corners. So let's just take a corner and you can just squish it together like so. And then just, sorry, the camera moved. Trim up just to the sewn line. And cut off your corners on the bottom, just on the bottom. And do the same for your outer fabric, clipping your corners on the bottom. You can just fold them all together and take off those corners. Don't cut into your seam though. Your next step, you've got the 
right side on the inside and on your lining we need to reverse this one so we're going to reverse and turn this one so the fabric the right side is to the outside and we'll just poke in these little corners with our finger and then we're going to pop the lining inside of our bag so now we're going to have right sides together right sides to right sides and now i want you to match up all your corners with your lining and outer fabric you can press one of your seams to the right press your lining to the left come in and watch where your seam lines are and make sure they are matched up perfectly. Once you've got that matched up, let's just put a pin in place and go around and do the same thing for all your other corners. Now this is the beauty of accuracy when you want to have your lining match your outer fabric. If you go in and give a little tug, then both of those fabrics should be perfectly the same size with no puckering. Now we've just got four tabs, so we're just going to fold a tab in half. Match up the top portions and we're going to slip it in between the outer fabric and the lining and we're going to place it the same distance across our two pieces of fabric and you can just eyeball to when you think you've got that in the middle of your pins or I should say in the middle of your sides. Okay, so when that's perfectly placed, pop in a pin and around you go and do your other tabs, folding exactly in half, popping in between, make sure they all line up and the straighter this is, that's why we cut these nice and straight, then the straighter the tabs will sit on your bag. Okay, our tabs are in place. Now you want to decide where you're going to turn your bag. Now the, the widest portion will be on one of your corners because we've got the tab in the middle. So I find it easier to allow this part to be my turning part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a red pin just on the edge of my tab here and then I'm going to place another red pin just to the edge of this tab here and those are my start and stopping points. So let's take it to the machine. We'll start here, sew all the way around and stop at the red pin. And now if you've got just your storage unit here and you can take that off and just expose your free arm, now is a good time to do that because then your little bag will fit right over your free arm and it'll be easier for sewing. And so there's my red pin. I'm going to start sewing right there. And I'm coming up to my red pin. I will be stopping there and backstitch of course and then we can take that off and there's our opening that we've allowed for turning so I'm going to just use my little stick here again and I'm going to come and just push into this and then bring it up 
through that hole and that will help me to get this turned to the other side. And then once you've got that started, you can take your stick out, pop the rest in there. And there we have our lining ready to pop into the middle of our bag like so. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to press this gorgeous little bag with the iron. And then we're going to top stitch around and then we'll close up our opening that we used for turning while it's pressed and we'll top stitch all the way around. And I like to top stitch seeing my outside fabric because that's going to show the most. And so it just gives me a better guide to see what I'm doing. And right now I'm following the inside of my presser foot along the outside of my fabric for my top stitch line. And of course back stitch and around you go. And for these bags, what I like to do is I like to grab a corner and squish it together and press those sides down. And that just boxes it up a little bit more. And then you can come in with your iron and just get in there and iron the lining. Okay, we finished up our drawstring, so let's just thread them in here nice and easily. I'm going to have it end up on one corner here, so we'll just work this around. And then just open it up, make sure you've got the same length on both ends here. And then you can take your ends and tie a knot up to the corner here. Just an easy knot. So there's our first one. And then we'll come around with the next cord. And this time we'll start on the opposite corner. And we'll start here. And there we have our completed bag. Matching drawstring, matching tabs, inside and outside. And if you want, you can reverse it. because it is reversible and now you've got a whole nother bag on the other side and then what I would do is just flip your drawstrings to accent the other color for the top and of course draw it up and you've got your darling little bag I promised you some extras at the end of the video, and this is what I've come up with. Generally speaking, a true Japanese rice bag is equal sides. But what if we just take that and think outside the box a little bit? I was looking through my Christmas fabric scraps, and I've got all these long pieces that I had left over. So I thought, well, what if we made a bag 
that was taller. And that is just what I'm going to do. I've made the inside lining already, and this is going to fit a bottle of wine. And all you have to do is just work on the same concept of having your perfect square in the middle, any size you want, but as long as these strips are exactly the same width as your center square, then you can make these size as long as you want. So basically I've shown you how to sew this process. I'm going to go ahead and sew this together and I will show you the final results soon. Okay, you ready for the final reveal? Here it is. Look at that. All out of scraps of Christmas fabric and I added some gold ribbon for the drawstrings so we didn't have to make those. Let's pop that bottle of wine in there. Let's pull out the strings. And how about we just tie a bow? There's the bow. There you go. What do you think? I love it. But feel free to, you don't have to make it out of Christmas fabric. Make it out of everyday fabric. And you've got a beautiful gift, a beautiful bag for a bottle of wine. And now we've even got more for you. Keep watching. Well, here you go. My husband gave me these jeans a while back. I've had them in my back bin there. I'm going, oh, I might do something with them. I don't know. Well, yeah, this is what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to make another Japanese rice bag. So, I mean, if you had to give them these to a 20 year old, they would have loved them. They're already ripped. <laughs> so I'm going to try to get some more squares out of these pants. The side seam is going to be my drawstring. So I'm just about halfway there. I got five out of this pant leg. So I cut off the top and let's cut off the other pant leg. So there you go. I've managed to get five squares for my lining, five squares for my outer fabric. They're cut at seven inches, or that would be 17.78 centimeters. I've cut up my seams for my drawstrings, and I've got enough left over to make some tabs. I'll make a simplified tab this time by just folding a piece of fabric in half and sewing down and turning. So I'm going to carry on and make this up. You've seen the process exactly the same as the other bags and wait to see what it's going to look like. This is what happens when you've got a creative mind. It never shuts down. Went to sleep, woke up, and now I want to put a pocket inside my jeans Japanese rice bag. This back pocket would have been perfect, but it's the same size as my square that I've cut. If I was making a larger bag, it would have been perfect. But if I try to sew this in, this seam here is going to be way too bulky, even though I'm using a dinner needle. So I did cut the pocket from the front and that will fit nicely on my little square. And I'm going to just zigzag around Well, what do you think? There's my finished jeans bag made from an old pair of jeans that we're going to get thrown out and we recycled them. And I've put the pocket on the outside just so you can see it, but it's reversible so it can be on the inside or the outside. 
So we've got our seams for our drawstring. And there you have it. And was this hard to sew? Well, if you've ever hemmed a pair of jeans, about the same. You really have to force your way up over the heavy seams with all that bulk in there, but it is doable. But uh, if you're gonna start out, I would start out with the cotton first, get yourself familiar with how to make the bags and then advance to your harder materials to sew. Well, I hope you're still with me. I know it was a long video, but I hope I gave you some inspiration and all the ideas to just fill your boots and make them for children or make a jeans one or make one more manly or make some Christmas ones or make them to be on your shelf for storage bins or Miss Floppy. It just goes on forever. I could be on this telling you all these wonderful things you can do and how to be more creative with this, but I would love to hear your ideas on what you're going to make and tell me what you think. This one here, by the way, is made from a rawhide vinyl. I just wanted to make one to look a little bit more manly. This one is the same amount of difficulty for sewing as probably the jeans one. So just caution there, but it is possible. And I might fill this up with some leather tools for a gift. Maybe I'll throw some sewing supplies or some makeup or anything on this one and give that as a gift. These make wonderful gifts and they can make also as a gift bag to put another gift inside. So I love these bags. I think these are a great idea and I hope you do too. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your wonderful comments. That's what keeps me inspired to keep making more videos like this. Bye bye for now.